I love the idea of failing forward. There was a number of years ago I read the book by John Maxwell with that very title, Failing Forward. And in that book, John makes some very significant points, which I've tried to incorporate into my life. The reason it resonated so deeply for me was I was in a, a workshop one time and the gentleman who was running the workshop looked at me and he said, Dan, do you have a problem with failure? Well, it kind of pierced my heart and up until that point, I really had never thought about myself having any issues with failure because I've always considered myself a pretty high achiever. In fact, I come from a family that is very successful in business, in college, and in all different arenas. I've got a number of brothers and sisters and they've all done very well. And I think my mom and my dad really instilled in all of us kids a sense of, of achieving and doing the best you can and having you know, a really good work ethic and integrity and those kinds of things. But I had never really thought about it in terms of me having a problem with failure per se. I realized that, you know, as I've come along that nobody's life is perfect. And as I've been able to relate to my life in, with a proper perspective, I've been able to realize that in many instances I've taken my individual failures or my, my, my tripping in a certain situation and been able to use them literally as stepping stones to success. I'm sure you don't have a perfect life. You have all the money you need or the perfect relationships or perfect marriage or perfect health. If you can learn to relate properly to those setbacks, to failures, then I believe that you're gonna be on the road to success. One of the most important things for success is having the proper attitude. If you can learn to relate to your experiences in a, with a proper perspective, with a proper way of looking at things, then you're gonna set yourself up for success. I also read a book recently by a man named Bill Dallas, and the book is called Lessons from San Quentin. Now that's another book that I could relate to because I made a number of mistakes in my life when I was in my 30s. That was about 20 some years ago. But when I was in my 30s, I decided to take the shortcut. I went for some greed and I got myself in some serious legal problems. In fact, I was convicted of some crimes. God has since been able to turn that situation into success for me, but it's only because I was able to properly relate to it. And in this book, Lessons from San Quentin, that Bill Dallas uh, relates his experiences and the failures of his life, he, he put a formula in that book that I think is pretty powerful for uh, it's a pretty good testimony on the importance of attitude. The formula is C plus P equals E. C plus P equals E. Circumstances plus perspective equal experience. You can have terrible circumstances and if you have a great perspective, you're going to have a great experience. Likewise, if you could be in terrible circumstances and you have a terrible perspective, I'll guarantee you, your experience is going to be terrible. If you can control your perspective, the way you look at things, the way you relate to those setbacks, those circumstances, the difficulties of life, you're going to be able to set yourself up for success because it's attitude which is the most important thing for determining if you succeed or not. I believe God's Word, the Bible, is filled with examples of men and women who have had good experiences and bad experiences, good perspectives and bad perspectives. For instance, just consider the example of uh, the prophet Joseph. Here's a guy, came from a large family, brothers with a lot of envy and jealousy sold him into slavery. He turns around and he has a great attitude while he's in that, that, that slavery situation and it results in him being promoted to being the head over the household of Potiphar. Then because of some circumstances that changed, Potiphar's wife falsely accused him. So he gets thrown into prison. But again, because of a great attitude, a proper perspective, in the midst of those terrible circumstances, he's able to take it and God is able to work with him and ultimately he's able to become second in command only to Pharaoh and oversee the entire kingdom of Egypt. See, terrible circumstances, good perspective is going to result in a great experience. How about uh, the prophet David? You know, David was a man, we think about David and 
him slaying Goliath and, and his life being really pretty, pretty good, lots of good things. But think about this for a minute. Here's a man, David, who spent the first 13, 15 years of his life after Samuel anoints him with oil and says, you're gonna be the future king of Israel. And he spends it on the run with his life basically being challenged at every turn by the King Saul. In fact, in David's lifetime, in this short period of, of time, he loses his position in the military. He's evicted from Saul's court, so he loses his position. He loses his, his, his uh, professional role. He loses his wife, which was Michael, who was the daughter of Saul. He ultimately loses his best friend, Jonathan, who uh, Jonathan is uh, Saul's son. He also loses his spiritual mentor, Samuel. At one point, he goes to Samuel on the run uh, with his life being challenged by, by Saul, and he loses Samuel. Samuel dies. He then even loses his country because he goes to Achish, king who resides in Gath, which was a Philistine king. And I believe he ultimately even loses his own self-respect, acting as a madman in front of the gates of Achish. Ultimately, David ends up in the cave of Abdullah or Ab Abdullam, something like that. And it's in that cave that I believe God is finally able to say, David, now I'm able to work with you. You've lost your position, your role, your prestige, even your self-respect. And God at that point brings together men who rally around David. It's David's perspective, his attitude, which is able to bring him to the point of great success. Yes, God was able to work with David and do mighty things, but it's because David constantly turned to God to find his source, his strength. It's David's attitude. In the same way, you can take control of your attitude. Your attitude is a choice, and your attitude is what is, what is going to determine if you succeed or fail. We train to, to, we trained to deal with our failures, and we will succeed. You know, there's many ways to be a winner, but there's only one way to fail, and that's if you don't get back up when life comes at you. Just think about Jesus Christ. He was dealt the most significant blows a man could be dealt with. Yet in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Can you imagine? He endured the shame of the cross because of the joy set before him. That's attitude, folks. He had the right attitude. He was able to overcome impossible circumstances. Don't ever decide that you are, that you are a failure. You may be dealt some failures, but that doesn't make you a failure. What makes you a failure is being knocked down and staying down. Life determined that Jesus looked like a failure. The ultimate testimony is God got him back up from the dead and he sits on the right hand of God right now. And he is Lord of all creation. But his attitude was a major part in his ability to achieve that. Change your perspective, change your life. Change your perspective, you'll change your attitude. You change your perspective and you're setting yourself up for success.